Mr. LaDonna was our very first paid exhibitor, and it's because of she and her group at YTB that we're all here today. So I just want to say thank you. And And go by and uh, make travel reservations and set up um, your business opportunity with her. Of course, that led me down quite a journey. The moment that um, I received her cash and spent it, <laughs> all hell started to break loose. One of the first things that happened was the car that I had been purchasing and paying someone for a friend, uh, paid them thousands of dollars for it, got repossessed. Turned out that they didn't have the right to sell me the car in the first place. So the next thing is uh, on the day before I was to make a major presentation to Joyce Rhodes and her boss over at Fulton County Department of Economic Development, an ex-girlfriend called the Atlanta police and told them a fib. So instead of being in the office with the head of Fulton County, I was on the tail end of Fulton County down at Rice Street. Can you imagine sitting there eating a peanut butter sandwich saying, damn, I'm supposed to be with the folks who... <laughs> well, you know, that situation got dropped. It was a fib, as I said, it was resolved and, you know. But I just want you to understand that in your journey, you're going to have some challenges, you're going to have some obstacles, you're going to have some unexpected horizons to come up. And the question is, what do you do when that happens? Well, I just happen to be a person of integrity. And I knew that I had uh, Donna's money spent. And um, so, you know, instead of trying to reimburse her, I said, we got to make this happen. You know, the show must go on. And so thank goodness, uh, our colleagues here at 200 Peachtree has been extremely patient and accommodating. Uh, we're glad to be here today. And I just want to say, um, give uh, Ms. LaShonda, Neil, and uh, her associates a big round of applause for putting this all together. So, you know, I thought about all the others who had had hard times at one time or another. One of the guys who came to mind was my good friend, Donald Trump. You know, I remember years ago reading this book, the Art of the Deal, uh, and that was all before The Apprentice became very popular. I remember him saying that at one point he was a billion dollars in debt. And I thought, you know, it must be pretty cool that a billion dollars knows your name. <laughs> I said, hmm, I could work with that. So it was at that point in time I decided to let those things that were chasing me push me into my destiny. Okay? That was uh, worth fighting for. So, I thought about the many other persons that um, needed to hear this story. Uh, one, perhaps, our president, Barack Obama, who's doing a tremendous job. And, you know, I realized, you know, he ran for an office thinking it was a very glorious office, but then after he got there, the very platform that he used to run on, folks started using against him, saying that he was incompetent, and this and that, and so forth and so on. So it's amazing how you can get into something, and then all of a sudden that thing that you're going after starts coming after you. When I think about Donald Trump, and I think about Barack Obama, two beautiful individuals, but unfortunately, they don't even like each other, and at this point, they're not even speaking. So again, I thought about Donna, and I said, you know, if they knew her story, the fact that she's just starting her business and me trying to put this thing together, maybe they would come together and they would do the right thing for us. I thought about a guy named J.K. Rollins, who was a fictitious animated writer, um, turned down by multiple publishers before he came away with a book titled Harry Potter. I thought about all of the persons who are now enjoying theme parks across the nation. This guy was told 302 times, stop dreaming, get a job. But if Walt Disney had listened to them, we wouldn't have Disney World and Disneyland. Sure. 
So now what about you? Why do you want to do what you do? What motivates you when your friends and your family and everyone you know says, give up, quit, you're a bum? Well, I took a look at this money and I was reminded of my home. On it says the U.S. Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve note. Again, because I'm from Washington, D.C., DC. I used to just go by the Federal Reserve quite often. I know exactly where it is. I actually had an opportunity to speak with persons from the Federal Reserve this past week and invited them here. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here today, but I'm sure that in the future they will be. Well, when I look closer at the money, I realize I need a whole lot more. But then what I realized is you know, I read what's on it, and it changed my entire situation, turned it around for the good. Today you're going to hear many wonderful stories, great friendships will be made. I can tell you all that what I went through is now a thing of the past. What Howard Schultz would led him to create Starbucks, and I forgot to even mention, you know, Howard Schultz was told time and time and time again, turned down by 252 bankers, no, we're not going to invest in it. But he went into one more bank, and because of that, we have Starbucks all over the nation. So, you know, I think about these guys, uh, J.K. Rollins, uh, uh, our buddy uh, Walt Disney. And like I said, I can tell you that I'm headed down to a beachfront location where, in a few weeks from now, We'll be able to, small business operators like us today, will be able to come down and have a weekend getaway, a business uh, excursion, so that we can do workshops during the day and we can play in the evening. Um, I've been pursuing a hotel chain for the last five years, and one of my good friends, Tony Patel, is here. He's going to talk during the daytime. He and I started, well, I started out in the hotel industry in 1993, and he was already in it. And, and so he'll be one of our keynote speakers during the noontime session. Um, so that we'll have this type of facility on the beach that we can do what the big boys do when they stay at the Ritz Carlton and places like this. Um, but, you know, what I want to leave you with is just two things. And that is, first of all, when you change your mind, you can change the world. <laughs> and then the other thing is, No, I really heard something going on outside. <laughs> the other thing is, when I look at the money, I'm not looking at the denomination, you know, the five to ten, or even the Benjamins. I'm looking at this one small line here that says, in God we trust. And that's what it's all about. When you need that extra up to go beyond your reality, to keep you focused when everyone else says no quit, when People lie on you when you give your money to folk and they run off with it and you have no recourse. You still got to stay focused. You say, had I quit, Marta's not here today. I'd still be riding Marta. But instead, I'll be riding some waves this time tomorrow evening. <laughs> so thank you very, very much for being here. We really appreciate all that you're doing. And at this point, I want to introduce, uh, like I said, the one who presented me with these two awards, and we'll do the same with you guys. She has many resources available. They have a table here, the Small Business Administration. And I think it's tremendous that they would come out and be with us today. So please give Ms. Terry Dennison a welcome round of applause. <laughs>